see you and welcome again to the table. Good morning. Yeah, very nice to have you with us. And uh, we're excited to bring today's edition to you. Uh, you can see on the table there's a line of candles. So we're carrying on with the idea with candles today. And it will be interesting to see what the professor has brought us. Uh, so it's very nice to have you with us and we hope that you feel welcome and that you will enjoy the next 50 or so minutes with us. Now today we are also privileged to have an, an external source, all our pathfinders across Scotland and adventurers are having their investiture today. So they are having a full program from early this morning right up until a three course dinner apparently through zoom where parents are going to be waiting on their children uh, and i'm sure they're going to enjoy it and so some of them may be seeing this afterwards so welcome to you if you just joined us <laughs> and uh and for those of you who are with us lovely to have you um yes i'll start with our opening prayer and then we'll continue let's have a prayer together Today, dear Lord, we are thankful because you have provided in so many ways and we thank you that you are always looking after us and that you're always providing for us. Today we will be talking about you again and, and, and Lord, we want to ask you to come and show us again today how much you love us. May we go away from this knowing that we are better because we know you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, we love to bring some report backs of some of the experiments that you have gotten up to at home. And again, we've received some lovely feedback. I can see from some of the videos that we have, you've gone and thought out of the box. Very much you've so. You've used hangers. Uh, you've used all sorts of things if you didn't have Lego blocks at home. And I'm very proud of each of you that have sent in your little experiment. So let's share what we have. Yes, what a way to start the day. Have a look. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for showing us your your in, ingenious ways of um, five of making those. Uh, it wasn't only paper clips. No, they were um, um, what you call those little. Oh, it was sort something of in a, things from yeah. Them. Yeah, keeps well, the, the the paper flat. Yes, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Lovely. Yes. Now tell me, um, last week we we talked about psalms. And we were very, very blessed by those individual psalms that yes. some of the children wrote. Now, my understanding is that we've left one of those for today because we didn't want to use them all up in one go. Yes, so we have privilege to share with you another uh, personal psalm that's been written by Jana. And so, Jana, would you like to share with us all? Believe in God and listen to his words, you'll be enriched and even higher than if you're rich. God's word is like a sword against evil. Remember, God is real. Thank you so much. What a wonderful talent that you have as well. Well done, well done. Yes. So we, we treasure those and um, luckily they will be on our, you know, you'll be able to see them on our videos whenever you watch them. Mm -hmm. So they are not lost or anything. They are no. there. And if you, any of you have decided to write your own psalms, uh, in the meantime, it doesn't matter. Just please send them in. We would love to share with everybody as well. Yeah. Yeah, we're happy to hear from you as far as that is concerned. So the email uh, address to send through is just down here. There we go. Jim Botha. I oh know Jim at Adventist.scot. You've got it. 
and please make use of it and uh, send us any information uh, or stuff that you've made and so on and we'll be happy to share it and also if you need to need help with anything else and you need to ask us a question of course you can make use of the same email address yeah so you know I'm going to pass the Bible on to you mm -hmm. thank you and then um, we, we're gonna Sadrine is going to read for us today the, the, the text, but the text is not far removed from the story that we're going to focus on as well today. Um, and so, and, and, and so, and, and this, these candles, and by the way, they are smelling very nice. Mm, cookies and cream. Um, and they are all related to this. Yes. So join with me if you have your Bibles to hand. We're going to the New Testament to the book of Matthew and we're going to chapter 6 and we're going to read from verse 19 and it says do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy but store up yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So today we're going to talk about what is it meaning to store up your treasures. To help us with that, we don't have to go too far because we have a little visitor right in our little back garden who hopefully will explain what it means to store up things on this earth. So let's share just a little snippet of this little guest. Here we go, have a look. Yes, so that you see that you notice what he was doing. He was climbing up on the bird bath where we've put some seeds and some peanuts mm -hmm. and so on. <laughs> and then he would pick out some of the peanuts and then he jumped off. Did you see then what he did? He went onto the lawn by the grass and he would go and dig a little hole mm. and bury his peanut there. Then he would come back and fetch another one and go to a different place yes. on the lawn. And I think by now our whole lawn... <laughs> we might have some peanut trees coming a, up. Our whole lawn is a peanut cemetery. Uh, I, you know, we, we'll have birds as well that come, as you can see, to the bird bath and we've got those seeds. Just in summertime, we had sunflowers growing out out of the grass because the doves and the little blue tits would come and they would scratch and throw some of the seeds out. Obviously, some of them were the sunflower seeds. They fell into the grass and the rain came and they sprouted. And it was beautiful to see how some of these sunflowers just grew so tall, about a meter and a half into the air. But our little friend, the squirrel, yep. He stole things of only one thing. Yep, storing up his treasure, his food. Yes, yes. So what is it that you have that you treasure? Is it maybe a, a special toy that's been given to you? Or is it, uh, if you're a little bit older, maybe is it something precious that your mom or your dad or your granddad or your grandmom has given on to you? that used to be theirs, something called an heirloom. Or maybe it's your treasure, your family, your mom, your dad, or for your adults, maybe it's your spouse. 
Maybe it's your gran or your grandpa. Whatever is your treasure, whatever you hold on to the most dearest, we need to think, how is that keeping us from Jesus? And if it is, do we need to reconsider what is our treasure? So think about the little squirrel going and burying his little nut. And we're going to look at it from a little bit of a different angle. So for this experiment, we're going to need some candles. And I am just lighting these candles. Mm, thank you. Because I'm going to have to disappear and I just want to at least do something. <laughs> thank you. So our candles are us. So they represent us. And of course the flame, like we did a couple weeks ago, is our connection to Jesus. So the, the connection that we have with Jesus. Our life. Our life, indeed. And so once you've got your candles lit, hopefully parental guidance there as well, you're going to need two more things from the kitchen. You're going to need some bicarbonate of soda. And this is what you use in baking. So hopefully granny or grandmom will have some in the cupboard. And then you're going to just need some white vinegar. And we're going to make a reaction. Now you may have done this reaction before, but this is what's going to happen. So you're going to have your little bowl, but I'm going to need some protection. So while you're putting on protection, I think I, because I don't have that protection with me, <laughs> maybe I should make a make disappear. A, a disappear in the act. All right. One, two, two three. three. Ding. So now I've got to remember to put on my goggles as well. So just oop, that's come loose. That's not going to work. So we'll just have to. Right. So here's the protection. So we're going to take our bicarbonate of soda and we're going to add to our jug or container about two heaped tablespoons of the bicarbonate of soda. And then we're going to add our vinegar. So this is why you need a little bowl because you will see the reaction that happens when we combine the two. And as we combine the two, you'll see that it starts to fizz. Oh, wow. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. See, and if you add it, it's going to go bubbling over. Now this creates, as you can see, a big volcano effect. But what it also does is it creates something called carbon dioxide. And if you take your jug and you hold it over, what happens? The carbon dioxide that comes off of this bicarb reaction puts out the flame. And so when you have stored up all your treasures on the earth, whatever you think is important for you on this earth is actually going to be something that's going to keep us from being with Jesus in heaven. So the, the carbon dioxide is invisible. We can't see it. And sometimes we don't realize that the things that we are keeping as our treasures is actually keeping us. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the vinegar and then we're going to try and see what happens to these ones again, just to make our things. I'm going to add a little bit more and it's going to rise up. Now, if I hadn't told you about 
what was going on here and what it makes. If I held it over and put there and you just saw the flame going out, you would think, wow, is some magic going on there or what? But when the, sometimes when we look at these things that we are storing up as treasures here on earth, sometimes we think they are really good for us, but in actual fact, they could possibly be bad. And so we need to think about these treasures that we have, whether it could be uh, possessions that we have, it could be money, it could be um, things that we think like our sports or things that are important to us. But in actual fact, when we look at what Jesus asks us to do, then it goes against what he does. And there's another way I can explain that to you, because if we go back to our Bible, and we go just a little bit further in the book of Matthew to chapter 19. There's a story about the rich young man who came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Well, there's one good thing. There is only one who is good. And if you want eternal life, obey the commandments. And the young man said, but that's what I've done. Is there a specific one that I must do? And Jesus said, no, you need to do all of them. He said, yes, but I've done that. And then Jesus turned around to him and said, then you need to go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Now this rich young man went away very sad because indeed he was really rich. But now we're not saying that if you have a lot of money, then it's not good. But what we're trying to say is if you have too many possessions and you're holding on to them because you think it's going to make you happy, it's going to be like this invisible force, the carbon dioxide, that puts our flame out. And when Jesus comes to fetch us, we might be a bit surprised whether or not we are going to go to heaven with him or not. So let's try and think about our life and whether we want to keep our flame alive by doing what God and Jesus want us to do, or if there are possessions, or if there are treasures of whatever kind that we have that are keeping us from being with Jesus. So I'm just going to give that one last little stir, and we're going to see. It's going to, whoop, poured it on there. <laughs> and it goes out. So again, it's not that we're saying it's good to have, it's, or it's bad to have a lot of good things. But let's consider that there are a lot of other people out there who don't. And so if we can be helpful to somebody else, and in that way, helping their flame, to burn brighter, then we will be sharing that treasure with somebody else. So I hope you have a good time trying this at home. And if you don't, how about you send us videos of maybe what's going on in your garden. Maybe you have a squirrel or some birds that have done some interesting things that you'd like to share with us. So feel free, if you're not able to do this experiment, then don't worry. Send us a video of what is going on in your back garden or in the park nearby. So until next time, have fun and I'll see you next week. Bye. 
So, how is your candle burning? Is your candle burning bright and high? Or is there at the moment some invisible substance dampening down what is going on in your life at the moment? Yes, that's the thing. This experiment shows us how something invisible can come and take out your flame. And last time, when we used a candle, we wanted to say that our flame is the life that we get from God. And we want to say the same today again. This flame that we see, uh, as far as this experiment is concerned, we each have a flame. But it is not guaranteed to burn. In this world that we live in, many different substances can come and extinguish our flame. And as the professor showed us earlier, it could be something even invisible. And so as we talk about this today, we're talking about those invisible things that can extinguish our flame. We're talking about things in this world, um, things that come into our lives and that take away our energy, takes away the life that God gave us. We're going to talk about the stuff we bring into our lives that could potentially keep us out of heaven. But I'm not going to give you a list today of things that you should throw away. No, I want to consider the building blocks of this conversation. I want to think about uh, what gives us quality of life. I want to think about things that help us prepare for heaven. I want to talk about relationships. I want to talk about our attitude. So today is not about making lists um, about what we should get rid of. No, it is more just considering where we are today and how we should think and feel about where we are going tomorrow. It reminds me so much of when I was a young boy, <clears throat> my gran uh, used to come and visit us maybe about once or twice a year or so. And in those days, there were not so much to go around. We were happy, e even though we didn't have much, but we were looking forward to the times when she came to visit. And we often saw other children playing with things and knowing that we couldn't have the same you know, we would just attempt to make our own. And so when my gran used to come and visit us, we were always given a gift of sorts. One time, she might come and give us each what is today the equivalent of 50p. Another time, she might come and give us a sweetie or a few sweeties. Um, and so... One day as she came in, she pulled out of her handbag, handbag a box of candy. We all knew what was going to happen. We are all getting sweeties or candy, if you prefer that word, you know. So now, when I saw the box of candy, my immediate thought was that she was going to open it and share all the candy among myself and my two brothers. So... Thinking that this would be the case, we all held our hands out in expectation that some candy will fall into our hands. But she went and she put the whole box of candy into my hands. She pulled out two more boxes and we each got a whole full box of candy. Strange how we remember days like that from so far ago in our lives. It was a special day, and, and maybe that's why I'm remembering it. It was a day that we got more than what we bargained for. Now, I also remember trying to keep my candy for as long as I possibly could. You know, being in a box and everything, you could hide it away. I remember that. That was the ongoing thought in my mind. I'm going to save it. The reality is, I don't really think it lasted for more than a day. I've always had this good intention in me 
to save up things. And, and I've often missed my targets. There is a beautiful text in the Bible, a text um, that the prophet has read for us already before today. And this text is found here in the book of Matthew. And I'm just going to repeat it. So go with me to the book of Matthew and follow there with me. I am in Matthew chapter 6 and it is verses 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now this particular text comes from a sermon that Jesus is busy doing as he speaks to those who follow him already, disciples, church members and so on. And in this particular part of the sermon, Jesus was talking about the necessity of giving to those who are needy. And so he had spent some time about uh, the people's own righteousness in the sermon and how uh, as church members they should, how, how they should treat their own righteousness. He talks about things like giving to the needy, but when do you when you give to them that you don't you shouldn't announce with trumpets as the hypocrites do but then he says that when you give to the needy let your left hand not know what the right hand is doing and the principle here is is really fairly simple if you feel you should do something for those who are in need then do so with an attitude of helping them not with the attitude of trying to show off to everybody else how good you were. The reality is, God knows us, and it is important to Him what we do. If it is more important for us that people should know how good we were, then that is already the starting point where Jesus is ready to say, do not store up for yourself things on this earth. Jesus is saying in his sermon that we should care for those who are in need, but we should not do it so that the whole world should see what we are doing. He even says that we should not even pray in such a way that the whole world knows what we are doing, like the Pharisees. And then here in chapter 6, he continues to teach them how to pray and he teaches them that famous prayer remember that that famous prayer the our father who art in heaven and then he continues in in this chapter and talks about forgiveness and fasting and all of these elements so far are all about attitude now you and i know what attitude means it is about our approach to life. It is about the way we think of ourselves. Now, if you know anything about flying an aircraft, you will know maybe a different understanding of the word attitude. When you fly an aircraft and you use the word attitude, you talk about the explicit direction that the aircraft is moving in. Now, when you're driving a car, you can go forward and left and right. But when you fly an aircraft, you can go forward, left and right, but also up and down. Now, that, that makes it a lot more complex, the fact that you can go up and down. And an attitude indicator is in an aircraft is that instrument that shows the pilot exactly which direction the nose of the aircraft is pointing. You see the thing is that when you're flying an aircraft you cannot necessarily feel with your body exactly in which direction you are traveling. This especially if you're in the clouds or when the visibility is just generally poor. 
You have to rely on the instrument to tell you what the exact position of the aircraft is, where the nose is pointing basically. And this instrument is called an attitude indicator. It is not telling you if the aircraft is happy or sad, it is telling you the direction that the aircraft is moving into. And as you can see on the picture that I've just shown you, it shows the aircraft is banking from side to side or pointing up and down and that is the purpose of that instrument. And when we have our discussion about what we read here in the book of Matthew, I believe the Sermon of Jesus has a lot to do with our attitude. And even though we know that attitude has a lot to do with how we feel, I would like to add that our attitude about how we deal with life right now will decide the direction in which our aircraft is pointing. So, like with these candles, if we are going to have flames that burn high, I believe our attitude right now can make all the difference. I believe that our attitude right now can prevent those invisible forces from dampening down our flame and eventually killing it. And so it is interesting how the Bible has stories that portray all these kind of things. Skip with me a few pages as we stay in the book of Matthew, but we go now to chapter 19 so that we can just have a little look at the story. And there you can read with me in chapter 19 from verse 16. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? he inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother. And love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. But what do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give it to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Well, what an interesting story this is. Here is a guy, he is very rich, he had great wealth, and he is a believer who keeps all the commandments. But when it comes to the question of going to heaven, and what is needed for him to go to heaven, well, Jesus simply had something else in mind. And he says to him, if you want to be perfect, Go and sell all your, possess your possessions and give, give to the poor and then you will have a treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me, says Jesus to the man. So can you see what brings a treasure in heaven? Earlier, Jesus said, do not collect on this earth where moth and rust can damage our treasures, but collect treasures in heaven, remember from our early text. Looks like when we help the poor, that is how we can collect treasures in heaven. Jesus said to the rich man, do this, give to the poor, then come and follow me. You know, there's one or two places in the Bible where Jesus is very explicit about going to heaven and where it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand what is needed for us to be able to go to heaven. This is one of them. Give to the poor. Then you will have a treasure in heaven. It's that simple. Help those who are finding life difficult and your flame will be strong. 
I said I'm, good, I'm not going to make lists today about what we should get rid of. But I want to make a list of this one item, a one item list. Help someone who has need. That's it. Then you will collect treasures in heaven. Now I know this story sounds like a very difficult thing to do. And certainly the disciples were thinking, well, exactly that. See how the story continues here in verse 23, Matthew 19, verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And then verse 25. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And this is key. This is so important for us to know. With men and women and children, it is impossible. But with God, how many things are possible? All things, says Jesus, are possible with God. How many of us are able to help somebody else? You don't have to be rich like the man in the story. You don't have to have many possessions. And even if you are, well, that's also helpful. You just have to have the right attitude. You just have to be pointing in the correct direction. You just have to be focused in your mind that you want to be in the business of helping others. And so, if you don't have many possessions, well, then how can we help someone else if that's the case? Oh, there are so many ways in which we can help someone else. Someone is not necessarily in need of physical things. Someone might not just be in need of your money, but they may be in need of your time. Maybe they need a hand to move something. Maybe they need your ear just to listen to their problem. Maybe they need your car for a lift. Maybe they just need a bit of sugar or a little bit of flour. Maybe they just need 10 minutes so they can have a good natter about this ridiculous pandemic. You know, I have a neighbor who lives two, do two doors on the side here. He's in his 80s at the moment. When he was young, he used to be a pro football player. What a nice guy. He enjoys immensely the 10 minutes or 20 minutes when we stand outside by the door and just having a talk. On one occasion, I was really very much in a hurry. I needed to leave urgently. And of course, we met outside, but he needed to have a bit of a chat. At that moment, I realized his need and decided to change my mind. And I decided there and then to change my attitude. And I enjoyed the chat with him until we were completely finished. A week later, when we spoke again, he told me that the day that we previously spoke was when his wife was in hospital and he just needed to get some stuff off his chest and that he really appreciated the fact that I was interested enough to stand there and listen to him. Now at the time there was no way that I could know that this is so meaningful to my neighbor. Sometimes we just don't have to give away things to help others. Sometimes we just need to be there to listen to them. And, and that is a way of collecting things in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy our treasure. So what is your attitude like these days? How is your flame burning? 
Are you standing with hands open, waiting for some candy, like we did when we were small? You need to remember that it's not just candy coming, but maybe the whole pack could be yours. That's the way God wants to deal with us, anyway. He likes to help us. God provides for us. It is interesting, back in chapter 6, as Jesus continues his sermon, where we read about treasures, he continues to say that we should not worry. We should not worry about where tomorrow's income will come from. He says that God is interested enough in us to provide for us. After all, after all everything belongs to Him. And this is what I want to leave with you today. We had this beautiful experiment showing us invisible forces that may be able to quench our flame. Essentially, these invisible forces in our lives are the things that we have collected for ourselves. Essentially, we have collected for ourselves things that we thought were good things to keep. Things that we spend so much time on that when we are busy with them, we forget that God is there waiting for us. Those items are not invisible, but the effect that they have on us may be invisible to us right now. Maybe you think it is harmless that you spend so much time on one of these treasures of yours. But what you don't see, what is invisible, is the fact that it could be harmful to you. How do we change our attitude? We change it intentionally. And I want to invite you today to change your attitude intentionally in the direction where God wants you to be. You know, it doesn't mean to say that um, if you have a lot of money that you will not go to heaven as we read there. Jesus calls us to change our attitude so that we can be in the right place, so that we can serve Him by helping others. Jesus calls us to serve Him through our humble efforts. There are so many ways in which Jesus calls us. I challenge you to listen to this when He calls you, even right now. We can listen to the call of Christ. Those of us who have maybe a few spare pennies. The Bible says there in chapter 19 where Jesus talks to the disciples, it is impossible for a rich man to go to heaven. Maybe the story should be expanded a little bit to say that until that rich man changes his attitude in such a way that needy people can be helped. Maybe that is your attitude already. And then lots of treasures have been saved up in heaven for you already. And so Jesus calls us to change our attitude intentionally, whether we have lots of money or not any at all. We can all help somebody else in so many different ways. Let's sing a song that reminds us that Jesus calls us. And we want to say thank you to Gordon, who is playing it so beautifully for us and uh, for leading our song today, as Jesus calls us. Thank you. Let's sing together. <laughs> Thank you.
Wonderful, what a beautiful song. Thank you, Gordon. And now I would like to invite you to pray with me as we close our service for today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the fact that we can be called by you to help somebody else, to collect treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy it. And the way that we can do that is by helping somebody else and Lord to get rid of that which is in our lives that will try to quench our flames we thank you that you will help us and that nothing is impossible for God in Jesus name Amen well it was so nice to be with you again today and uh, from myself and the professor we would like to say that we wish you all a very good week until we see you again next week, all of the best and God bless. Bye-bye.